Hello everyone, this is Waiting in Silence. A few people have asked me about how I make my masks and what program I used. And for a while I've been thinking about making a tutorial, but now that I finally know how, I decided to give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them promptly. When I mask, I use Sony Vegas Pro 11. This is the project file I used for part of my UPIC iVid video. When you're first starting out, I'd suggest using a character that you like. That way, when you keep looking at the different frames of the same character and over and over again, you won't get as bored. For your first few projects, I'd suggest going with a clip with either little or no movement. That way, if you're like me, you'll be able to see your library grow faster and be more encouraged to keep going with it. Here you can see that even a video with not that much movement in it can still require a whole lot of markers. Because even a simple mask can take a lot of time, be sure to credit anyone whose masks you use. If you're working with full episodes or very long clips, instead of dragging and dropping the full episode onto the timeline, go ahead and open it in Trimmer. To do this, go ahead and right-click it, then select Open in Trimmer. Once you've done that, you can adjust your view until you pick out which part of you want to actually edit. Then drag and drop that onto your timeline. Now to ensure your footage won't be matted, be sure that the dimensions of your project file and the dimensions of the media that you're working with all match. You also want to make sure that the frames per minute are the same too. You can adjust the length of your clip by dragging and dropping the edges. At the end of each clip, there should be a little square. That's the Event Pan Crop button. Click that to start masking. Select the button that looks like a calligraphy pen. Then by clicking your mouse, you can draw an outline around the character. Whether or not you leave in the black lining is up to you, but try to stay consistent. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. After you finish this first outline, you can zoom in and be more specific. The button with the lock on it is your sync cursor option. Use this to have your event pan crop window and your preview window match up frame by frame. Here's a little trick I want to show you. Go to Show Properties. Here you can adjust the mode, either positive, negative, or disabled. You can use negative mode to cut out gaps between strands of hair or fingers, things like that. But most of the time you're going to want to have it in positive mode. Using the magnifying glass, you can zoom in on your mask. Then, using the standard cursor, you can adjust the anchors to be more accurate. Hold down the control button and then click on an anchor to decide whether you want it curved or at an angle. You can adjust the curve by pulling on the arms. Now let's zoom out to see how we've done. Not too bad, but I think I'll take a little bit more off the sides. Now let's zoom back in. And save your project. I cannot emphasize that enough. Save it, save it, save it after every major change, just in case. The first noticeable difference is between these two frames. So I'm going to place a marker at the very last moment right before she moves. To do this, press the diamond button with the plus sign inside. Now we're going to skip ahead to the last time she moves. I'll explain why in a moment. Go ahead and adjust the mask accordingly. Because we didn't delete the path and make a completely new one on our next frame, Sony Vegas tries to estimate what it thinks happens between these two frames, kind of like Animorphs. Sometimes it's pretty close, other times it's really, really dumb. This is why I set that second anchor, to make sure that the morph change didn't happen right from the very first frame. Now I'm going to set an anchor from the one that seems most accurate, and then work from there. Adjust the anchors one by one, and then move on to the next frame. Keep doing this until you're done. You can move a marker by selecting it and then dragging it to the point that you want it. For the most clear mask you can have, start with HD footage and then render in HD. 
Even if the footage you're working with isn't high definition, when you render in high definition, at least the edges will be crisp. This prevents having a little green or blue outline around your character. Be sure to select Disable Resample to make sure that your video won't be interlaced. You'll be able to tell if your video is interlaced if it looks like the occasional frame is actually two frames blended together. One last double check. If you only want to render part of your project, click above the timeline and then drag across the screen. This will give you a little highlighted section that you can put above the part that you actually want to render. Pick a name for your mask. I almost always render an MP4 because I know it's going to be good quality. You can check if any of your presets match by clicking Match Project Settings. And it looks like I don't have one, so I'll make a custom one instead. Scroll down and go to Customize Template. Then match up the frame rate and the frame size to the one that you're working with. For the bit rate, I go with 2 pass. It just seems a bit crisper to me. Because masks don't have sound, you can go ahead and mute the audio. Otherwise, it'll have a dummy file in there that will take up just a bit more space on your computer. If you haven't already, select Render Loop Region Only. This makes sure that you only render the highlighted region, and then render. The time it takes to render your new mask will depend on how long the mask is, and what quality you're rendering it in. Now let's preview what we made. It's going to take some patience, and if you're like me, it's going to take a lot of time to get used to, but I know you can get the hang of it. I know you've heard this a lot in school, but you're going to want to save often. I know it sounds obvious, but when you don't do it, you're going to regret it. Now instead of... Uh, now I'm going to skip his head... Uh, by having the sync cursor option enabled, you'll be able to see what you've done on the... Pre uh. You also want to make sure that the frames per minute are the same for both your... Uh, for your first mask, I'd go with something still or has it black. Because we didn't completely start over and make a completely different... Mm, how do I put this? The sync cursor option lets you see... Your black. The button with a lock on it is your sync cursor option. Use that to have your event pan crop video. Mm. The button with a lock on it is the sync pan crop option. The button with the lock on it is your sync option. No, it's not. No, it's not. I can't talk. 